I've always dabbled uh, as an artist growing up and into my adult years, but it was in 2014, I painted Elsie. And the reason was that on the shed, somebody had tagged it. And I instantly thought, man, it'd be nice to cover that up with something beautiful. And I thought of, of Elsie Yannick. And it was so great, because after I painted it, we brought her over to see it. And it was really, really touching. And that sort of began everything. There was sort of a social media movement at the time to come and get your selfie with Elsie so people would search out this mural and then post it on social media. Eventually, Justin Trudeau came to get his picture taken with it. Um, and that was the catalyst to a real shift for me. I just kept painting after that. It was one mural after the other. Then I kept looking for things to paint on. I had no canvases at the time, so I just would grab a piece of wood and I'd paint on that. And there were a couple of times I painted on old album covers. Yeah, and uh, eventually I bought canvases and they started selling and uh, it's been amazing where it's gone. So this gives you a, a, a small example of, of what I've been doing. Of course, these are more recent works. On the wall is a mix of, of prints and originals. This is a, a monkey. We were at Angkor Wat, which is one of the great wonders of the world, and we were in this air-conditioned vehicle, and it was time to get out. We're in the parking lot, and I opened my door, and this guy was right there, like literally right there. And he was posing for me, and so I took his picture, and. Uh, and that was uh, the result. I am become somewhat known for painting ravens, uh, and the reason is that I, after the fire, for whatever reason, I became very connected to the ravens and would have lots of conversations with them. They'd be up in the trees uh, next to the studio, and I would be taking their pictures. And so we have here, this is the King of the Ravens, which was named by one of the students at St. Kateri School when I was painting it uh, with the kids. And over here is, is a pair of ravens in the snow. And this, they were so cute. Uh, they were just taking care of each other up in the tree during a brutal storm earlier this winter. And uh, so, I, so I wanted to capture that. So that's a couple of examples. This is Mern's water buffalo. Mern is uh, a lady that we, um, we built a house for Mern in Cambodia. And when we went back to visit her a year after we built her home, uh, this guy was in a slough right by her house and he was just staring at me. And so I knew I had to paint him, so I call that Mern's water buffalo. This is one of my favorites, actually. It's, it's the happy hippo. It just makes me happy. <laughs> Simple as that. So an artist in Edmonton um, made a suggestion for me. I was doing the 19 day painting challenge where uh, the people that follow me suggested different things that I could do and, and then create paintings from, from their suggestion. And so his suggestion was to paint uh, something about the Fort McMurray fire that was personal, that was something from my perspective, and I hadn't done that yet. And then for me, this is the image of the fire uh, that, that I experienced uh, trying to get back to Fort McMurray. I was doing a workshop in, um, at Mark Amy Treatment Center by Anzac, and I hit this on the south side of the community. And it was, I described it as the apocalypse because that's exactly what it looked like. And I kept driving into it and of course behind here is Beacon Hill, which is obviously on fire. And I managed to get a certain distance, but then the flames were, were everywhere and, I, and I, I couldn't get home to my family. And uh, so for me, this is deeply personal. And when, and I was, I almost didn't paint it um, for a whole series of reasons, but I'm, I'm, I'm glad I did because a lot of people reacted to it positively, but also deeply emotionally. This, this, this was, something that hit a lot of people really hard. It's called The Road Home. I came to Fort McMurray in 1996, and I was the program director of the radio stations in town, and it was the year that Chris Phillips went number one on the NH in the NHL draft, and I remember um, we, we had a couple of people down, I don't even remember where the draft was, somewhere in the States, and we got the first interview with Chris, uh, that day after he went number one. I also remember uh, 
I always would see his dad waiting for the bus up in, uh, in Beacon Hill um, because we used to drop our kids off there. So this is a, a painting I did of Chris Phillips. Um, it was part of my 19 day painting challenge, raising money to build a house for another family in Cambodia. And the, the prompt was a Fort McMurrayite who left the community and went on to do some amazing things. And of course he had a long and amazing uh, career in the NHL. And what we're going to be doing is we have two of these and we're going to be making them embellished prints and they're going to be in our auction and all proceeds are going to be going to Kids Sport with Buffalo to encourage young people in our community and give them access to, to sporting opportunities. So this was the very first uh, piece uh, when I really got serious about painting and uh, this is a, it was a photograph taken by a photographer named Joey Pudlubny at the Oil Sands Banquet. I don't remember the year, but Elsie was doing the prayer and that was the first image that popped into my mind when I decided I want to paint something beautiful over top of the, the tagging that had happened on the shed. And after we brought her here to see it, she actually lent me her prayer book and so written Within the piece are all kinds of different prayers that she would speak at public events. As an example, O Great Spirit, whose voice I hear in the wind, whose breath gives life to all the world. Uh, Prime Minister Trudeau, when he was here, read that and he said, my God, that's, that's the prayer I spoke at my brother's funeral. So it was really quite touching. So that was the first one and, and, and I decided I wanted to paint historical figures important to Fort McMurray on the shed. It's a public throughway, so everybody, it's public space. So the second mural I did was Dorothy McDonald. Now Dorothy was, was our neighbor. She lived just down the back alley until the year she died in 2005 and her husband Rod is still a neighbor. And so he came over and watched as I brought Dorothy to life. And what's really wonderful is so many of their family members make a point of coming here to have a look at Dorothy. Um, she was a fierce proponent of, of Fort Mackay First Nation and uh, so much of what Fort Mackay has today began with the fierceness and the determination of Dorothy all those years ago. We have Punch Dickens. Uh, Dickens Field is named for him. He was a legendary bush pilot. Jim Dory was a singer-songwriter from Fort McMurray. He worked at St. Crude for many years. Uh, passed away of cancer a number of years ago and he was the man that built this uh, studio and did a lot of singing and songwriting in this space and I'm convinced that his spirit, his positive energy has allowed uh, all the amazing things that have happened in the, in the studio. And this is Tom Morimoto and Tom, amazing guy. He was alive when I did this. It was shortly after he was here presenting at TEDx and uh, I remember two things. One, his, his handshake was the strongest handshake I've ever experienced in my life. And in the final year, or the year before he died, he was still golfing three times a week. Incredible guy. Um, lots of super stories. And a, a, a Fort McMurray, I call him Fort McMurray's Forrest Gump because he had encounters with, with Carl Clark and Punch Dickens and Watt May going back a long ways. Uh, so a big piece of Fort McMurray history here. 